Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys my latest Ubuntu setup on my laptop. So let's get started. Well, it's been some time since I last showed off my Ubuntu setup on my laptop and you guys seem to enjoyed it last. And recently I upgraded my hard drive on this laptop from 256 to one terabyte. So that means for a full reformat because I just wanted to redo the entire computer for 2021 basically. Now, originally I bought this laptop in 2018 and 256 gigabytes for a work laptop was okay. I didn't have any problems with it because I wasn't really playing games. The laptop that I have right here, which is the Lenovo IdeaPad 530S, is an eighth generation i7 core with eight threads, four cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and NVIDIA MX150. All of which, which makes this a pretty decent laptop if I needed to use the dedicated graphic card. And I don't play much games off this guy originally, but now I decided to switch against that because I could install games if I needed to, even if it is on a weaker graphic card. The operating system of choice is Ubuntu 2010, and I'm using the latest version of GNOME, which is 3.38, and the kernel version is 5.8. So let's jump in to see what I've done. So in here, what I've got is the Mac OS wallpaper, and I kind of like it. I saw it at first, and then I kind of like the feel of this wallpaper. So normally when I theme or write my laptops, I tend to go for the wallpaper first. So if I could find a wallpaper, I could theme everything around it to make it look good. So I got the wallpaper from Mac OS and if you wanted to, you can actually head over to my repository, which is Nova Spirit and then uh, RPI UBU 64 desktop. And in there, I actually have all the configurations that I do to my Ubuntu on my Raspberry Pi, but I, I, it translates over to my laptop as well. So these are all the extensions that I'm using. I actually have a few more in here that's not listed. And if you need to get the wallpaper, you can just head over to my wallpaper and I have a few of them over here as well. And I just updated this a couple, of, a couple of days ago. So yeah, the wallpaper that you see on my desktop is there as well. So to go down the list on my GNOME tweaks, if you take a look, I am using the Nordic Polar which is this theme that you'll see here. So if I go over to my files, um, you could see that this is more of the white, but it's a gray hint on the, most of the windows, which makes it look pretty good. On the top right, you also get those little pills, just like the Mac OS style. So I like that it flows well with the wallpaper. It flows well with the background. It flows well with the theme itself. So uh, that's why I decided to choose the Nordic Polar. As far as the cursor theme, I'm using the Breeze cursor, which is one of my favorites. I always use this one. So I don't really change away from this theme because I just like the way it looks. The icon theme is the Eura Deep Blue. So the normal one that it comes with, the Eura, is actually very uh, purple and it kind of clashes with this purple. So I decided not to use the default theme. Instead, I changed it to the blue, which kind of helps with this over here on the home icons and also on the top right. So I kind of use the deep blue. There's a lighter blue version that you could use, but it doesn't look as good. Let me switch over and you can see. You see, it's a little lighter. You could kind of blend it with this one, but it's a little bit too bright for here. So I decided to stay with the deep blue. The shell theme is also the Nordic Polar, which is the bottom bar you see over here. And I did put a hint of transparency on there, about 80%. So it's not too transparent at all. And that's basically about it as far as my themes go. A couple of things that I did add to this is the sound. This is an extension that you can add on, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. This allows you to choose between your headphones or your speakers or HDMI, all you could choose from here and you could just switch to sound audio. So that's an extension you could put in. Now I did have caffeine extension. That's always what I have on every GNOME installation. This way my computer doesn't go to sleep when I'm doing like video desktop reviews like this. Uh, I got my wire guard because this is my laptop, my work laptop, so I do have wire guarded connections. And then this is the CPU manager that I use. Now for Intel based CPUs, uh, this is a better uh, CPU frequency controller compared to the other one that I normally choose, just because it's uh, it works better. That's how I feel. Now I didn't go for the normal arc menu. I just stayed with the no menu because uh, one of the things I get to do with the no menu is if I right click, I could launch with a discrete graphic card. So if I'm using DaVinci Resolve or if I'm planning to play any games, I could just right click, go into the dedicated graphic card. Now, one thing I did do on this installation, especially is that I am not using Lutris at all just to get any games going. So say like my Epic Game Launcher, I've installed this using Wine 6.0. I don't use any Lutris installers or anything. It just runs. And if I wanted to play a game, uh, say like Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, which is a pretty recent game. This came out last year. It just works. Um, 
See, look at that. Welcome to flight training. It just works really well. Even on a weaker GPU, something like this, I'm able to get it to work. But I'm going to close that out. Now, I do have a video on my gaming channel coming out soon where it will actually show you all the common things or common libraries that you need to get games working using Wine Trick. So this way you could get software installed just like this without having to use Lutris. Now, this goes same for everything else. Uh, I have my uh, Steam libraries, my Mini Galaxy and all that other stuff, none of which is using any other software like uh, Lutris. And that's basically about it as far as software goes. And then you got the common software. I got the DaVinci Resolve, uh, LibreOffice, and a few other things that I got going on. Now I am on a hybrid graphics mode. That's why I'm able to do right click and discrete graphics. So normally it is on the Intel graphics. And then if I need to play a game, I could just switch it over to the hybrid graphic mode. And last but not least, one of the, my favorite plugins is this wobbly window. This way, if I move it around, you can see it's all wobbly and everything. I, I love that look because anybody who looks on my screen, they're gonna be like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Well, that's about it. I try to make this as minimalist as possible just so it, there's no clutter. It looks very clean. Uh, everything you find on this desktop that you didn't see me talk about, like blur my shell or some other stuff is actually on my GitHub. So you could just go to the bottom and see what I've installed. And if you guys want to pick my brain about this stuff or theming and everything, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.